Welcome in everybody to the first edition of this in-season power rankings on the channel. I decided not to do one last week mostly because we didn't really have much information on the Montreal Alouettes because they didn't play in week one and I wanted to give a more informed opinion. I did post my preliminary power rankings on my Twitter account but this week I'm actually going all in in a video and there should be a weekly video if not a bi-weekly power rankings video coming out every week from now on. And with that said, I'm going to try not to be super long-winded here uh, because I just did my 10 takeaways video yesterday and I don't really want to repeat myself too much. But with that said, let's get into it with our number nine team, the Edmonton Elks. And honestly, I couldn't have put any other team here, honestly. Like, they gave me no choice. As I pointed out the past two recaps, this team just looks freaking lost from an organizational standpoint. Everything from quarterback to play calling has just been way worse than I ever could have foreseen, especially with the proven CFL talent the team brought in this offseason, such as Darrell Walker and James Wilder Jr. As a result, the Elks find themselves at the bottom of this week's power rankings. I think it could change. I think we're going to see some major shifts in this power rankings by the end of the season but for now number nine seems about right to me at number eight we have the ottawa red blacks who are on a bye this week after they stole game in edmonton week one this looks to be a defensively led team with a rangy back eight as we saw against the elks very opportunistic defense the big question though how much did the bye week help quarterback Matt Nichols get healthy? Because when we saw this offense in week one, it was honestly pitiful. It was horrible. For that reason, I can't have Ottawa any higher than number eight because they just haven't shown much improvement. And last time we saw them in 2019, they were also awful on offense. So we need to see that improvement before I can move them up in this rankings going forward. But I really do like their defense despite the offense's struggles. But we'll see what they bring in week three. At number seven, we have the Calgary Stampeders. The only reason they rank ahead of the Red Blacks and Elks here is because we've seen them play the best half offensively of those three teams. Week one against the Argos in the first half, they look pretty good offensively, look kind of like their former selves. But ever since then, it's kind of been a complete disaster. Then you have this injury to Bo Levi Mitchell. Apparently, it's a lower, lower body injury, a leg injury, and... We're going to have to see how that affects this team going forward. They're likely to start the Canadian Michael O'Connor this week against Montreal. And we'll just have to see how this team battles this adversity that they haven't usually seen in recent years, being the CFL's most dominant regular season unit. At number six, we have the Hamilton Tiger Cats. There is a huge drop off for these last four teams, I will add based on what we've seen so far this season, but I still have the most faith in Hamilton to bounce back out of the bunch. They played the best two teams in the league, in my opinion, the first two weeks, going into two of the hardest environments, Winnipeg and Saskatchewan, and now they have a much needed bye week to get healthy, to get the guys like Tundi Adelke, Braylon Addison, hopefully get those guys back to speed and fix this offensive line, which has just been a disaster, frankly. And that's really a theme for these last four teams in this power rankings all these offensive lines have not looked good in my eyes through the first couple weeks this season they really need to sort out that left tackle situation k okafor who's been a perennial backup throughout his career clearly not a starting caliber cfl tackle really been a turnstile there and most importantly they must make the call at quarterback mazzoli seems to be extremely rusty following that acl injury he suffered in 2019 and History shows that guys that suffer that injury, especially quarterbacks, they take two seasons worth of play to get back to their former selves. So take, for example, Tom Brady in 2008. When he came back in 2009, he wasn't the same old Tom Brady, but in 2010, he was MVP of the league. So Mazzoli, I don't know if he can shake off the rust this season. I don't think he's going to be back to that former form this season. I think Dane Evans, all things considered, would probably give this team the best chance to win if they prepared him the whole week. At number five, we have the Toronto Argonauts. Overall, I've been really impressed by their play the first couple of weeks, especially the new look defense, the defensive line. Even though Charleston Hughes hasn't got on the stat sheet with a sack yet, they're still making an impact. They're stopping the run at a consistent rate. The defensive secondary looks really good as well. And I had a little bit of questions about that unit. Uh, so I think this is a really talented team. 
but the question is quarterback, right? And Jamal Campbell also at right tackle really struggled in week two against Winnipeg. So we'll have to see how this team sorts out the quarterback situation and the offensive line at right tackle. But I think it's a very talented team and I couldn't have them any lower than number five. I really couldn't put them below any of these other teams uh, so far this season. At number four, we have the BC Lions. If Michael Riley the quarterback for the BC Lions stays healthy the rest of the season, which is honestly a huge if. They will be in the Grey Cup conversation, I have no doubt about it. It's an extremely talented team, especially on the perimeter, and it looks like they've solved those offensive line issues that have plagued the team over the past couple of years, especially 2019. So we'll see how that continues going forward if when they play these great defensive lines such as Edmonton this week, it's going to be very interesting. This team really struggled against the Edmonton Elks in 2019 and we're gonna have to see if those tackles are up to snub like they were in the first couple of weeks and also the defensive back room I think has the potential to be the best in the CFL this season you have stars like TJ Lee and Gary Peters and Marcus Sales obviously and then you got newcomers like Keandre Harden and Jalen Edwards Cooper back there those new additions really making a good impact for BC. The defensive line's been a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. So honestly, BC is kind of breaking expectations to this point in the season. So we'll have to see if that continues going forward. But for now, they're at number four in the power rankings. At number three, we have the Montreal Alouettes. And this is perhaps the most impressive team from week two of this season. It looks like they have a much improved pass rush. And that really did stand out against Edmonton. Almondo Sewell looked really good on the inside and then the edge players Nick Usher and Antonio Simmons looked like huge upgrades to what they had there in 2019. So really, really positive development there for the Alouettes. But then on the offensive side, I think they have arguably one of the best run pass balances of any team in the league. You have the power back and William Standback who needs to work on his hands a bit. He dropped a few easy screen passes in week two, but in terms of the running ability, I don't think there's really anybody as a pure runner that's better in the league right now. And Vernon Adams, a guy that, you know, is going to extend plays and break the defense down and take those deep shots down the field. And we saw that with a deep pass to Jake Wynicke in week two. So I'm really, really high on this Montreal Alouettes team after seeing what they did in week two. I'm excited to see what they do against Calgary this week especially now that Calgary's not going to have Bo Levi Mitchell. I think Montreal has a great chance to go in there and win again. And uh, I'm really, really excited to see how they do the rest of the season. At number two, we have the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And this is where we might get some disagreements here in the comments section. I think some people would have them at number one. And I could see it uh, based on what we've seen. Cody Fajardo, the quarterback's playing at an MOP level uh, arguably been the best player in the league so far this season the offensive line has been much better than i expected and the secondary is still very very much elite with playmakers like nick marshall luchez pirafoy and new starters like blaze brown really impressing so i'm really really excited about the rough riders going forward this season i think offensively they have the potential to be the best in the cfl and i'm just really excited to see if they can sustain that the rest of the season and this is a team I did predict that they would narrowly miss out on the playoffs. So they're kind of blowing my expectations out of the water right now uh, because I thought this offensive line would struggle so much that they would uh, really sink. But they've actually been one of the better offensive lines in the league through two weeks, surprisingly. So kudos to the Rough Riders. And that's why they rank at number two in the power rankings. At number one, finally, we have the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Quite honestly, I think the main thing that gives me so much confidence about the Winnipeg Blue Bombers going into the rest of this season is they're playing the trenches. I think they're easily the best team in terms of combination between the offensive line and the defensive line. Uh, they have done a really good job replacing those pieces in the defensive secondary when they lost guys like Marcus Sales and Jonathan Rose. Uh, so they've done a really good job replacing that. Those absences haven't really been felt as of yet. And also Zach Kolaris has just been so good at managing the game. He's playing the best football I think I've seen from him in five years. And if they get that level of Zach Kolaris, who's just a really, really good fit with this organization, it's really been clear from day one, I think this team has a chance to repeat as Grey Cup champions 
in 2021. But with that said, that is going to be the end of today's video, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Once again, my name is Jason. If you want to support the show, the best way to do it is by hitting that like button and subscribing to Hussies Huddle for more CFL content just like this. Be sure to let me know in the comments what teams I rank too high, which teams I rank too low, and all that fun stuff. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.